So that's more than 1,000 kilometers across, which is absolutely massive. <laughs> so last week, we've had an epic, amazing, game-changing interview, which you, sh you should definitely watch, by the way, with uh, Professor Jan Smit, who is the co-discoverer of the dinosaur extinction. And uh, he's also obviously an expert in uh, meteorite uh, impact structures. And for a brief moment, he showed us these uh, structures that uh, we can call mega impact structures. So they're basically the remains, sort of the root systems of these giant, giant, giant impacts that happened in Earth's very, very, very distant past. You guys remember the name of the one he mentioned? The one near Quebec? Oh, here it is. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Here's the Hudson Bay. Hup okay. And these are the Nestapoca Islands. And by the way, this is the oldest crust. Can you get that on the on the video? Just uh. Can you show it? Maybe it shouldn't reflect the light. We can put it in screen anyway, so. Just take your time. All right, so here in northern Canada, uh, we have some of the oldest preserved crust in the Earth. So all of this, uh, this crust is, is what they call Craton, which is the mother continent. And all of the more recent rocks, they have been uh, eroded away by massive glaciers in the Ice Age. So uh, what that does to the surface is that it exposes some of the world's most ancient rocks. So do you know where the most ancient rocks of the, in the world have been found? In Russia or something? Uh, close, but it's actually uh, here in Canada. So one of these areas here has the Akasta Gneiss, which is the oldest... Uh, yeah. A Gneiss formation. Yeah, the oldest rocks that have ever been uh, discovered. So what happened in the very, very early past of the Earth is that there were a lot of meteorite impacts, so far more than we have now because the solar system was very chaotic and all the pla planets were colliding and all this stuff. So these very, very old rocks, they uh, have preserved some of these impact structures. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a couple of these. Not all of these have been confirmed, right? So, uh, of course, in the GEO show, we only give you the absolute facts, so everything we say is 100% true, but we don't always have the backing of, uh, of let's say, the peer-reviewed literature. But anyway, circle, yeah. nothing around. I know, I know what created that. That one. The this is the whole crater. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here in the in the subgrounds, you can see some very clear circular structures. Yeah, that's a beautifully drawn circle. Perfect. Perfect. So here's another one right next yeah. to it. And why, yeah, th why would there suddenly be a perfect circular lake? Exactly. So perfect circles are ob obviously a very good indication of a uh, meteorite impact, right? Yeah. So another very, very famous one is uh, this one. It's also very circular. Yeah, but these circles are filled up. Yeah, so I think this is an artificial lake. So this, the artificial lake sort of accentuates the coastline and gives you a really perfect outline of the crater. The actual crater is actually larger than, than this lake. So the actual crater is, uh, uh, this one is called Manicouagan. It's a really big one. I think one of the biggest in the world. It's going to get bigger than that. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to go for the biggest of the big. Same. What Jan Smits showed us last week is this one. Oh, this is such a perfect half circle. Yeah, so this is Sunny Kualak. It's, uh, it's part of uh, uh, Inuit land. And what it shows is that there's a perfect half circle, right? So uh, Jan Smit uh, says that really the only type of process that can form this circular phenomenon in this type of rock is a giant mega impact. Can you just point at what you want to show? Here you can see it's perfectly circular. Uh, the, the, the other half of the circle is missing. And uh, uh, people say it's a sort of tectonic slab rollback or whatever. <laughs> but can you tell me which process produces a multi-layered ringed 
perfectly circular. It's, it's a perfect. So obviously the crater itself is gone. Like it's probably billions of years old. So this happened way before there was any yeah. complex life. And so way before the Chicxulub impact of the, that killed the dinosaurs. Exactly. Yeah. So this, so these mega craters, they're not associated with the extinction. Because so, so you no can't more. relate them to something like that. No, because there, there are no species to go extinct, right? Yeah. If there were, there would probably be a really, really big extinction, but... but what, I, what I do question when I see this half structure is if it's like that long ago that this happened, how can it still be like that perfect of half a circle? Yeah, that's a good question. So we can draw it on paint. So here on GeoShow, we only use the most advanced software, like Microsoft Paint. <laughs> and what this would look like is that you... This is the Earth's uh, surface, like let's say 3 billion years ago. And then there's a mega, mega giant impact, right? So there's a huge crater, right? And this forms all sorts of structures and whatnot underneath. Because this is like, we're talking something way, way bigger than the impact that killed the dinosaurs, right? But obviously this is 3 billion years old. So all the glaciers and all the processes have eroded all of this stuff. Right, so all the tectides gone, all the crater gone, everything gone. And the new, like the modern surface is just deep enough so that you just basically expose some of the deepest roots of the actual uh, crater. It's fascinating, actually. So the actual impact might have been even larger. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, the actual intact crater would have been probably much bigger yeah. than this. So just for sort of size reference, the Chinxalup impact was about 150 kilometers in diameter. And this uh, Sandy Kualak is, let's say we extrapolate this circle. Mm -hmm. and where, where do we go? We are 470 kilometers. So that's, yeah, way, way bigger than the Chinxalup impact. It's huge. Just two weeks ago. So, I but this is like crater heaven, right? Because there's one, two there. There's a Manicouagan there. So, yeah. there are craters galore in northern Canada. By the way, two weeks ago to Walter Elvers, we flew right here. So, we took pictures of these two and the rim of the crater, which I believe is a crater. So but I this has not been proven. Uh, not been proven because you see there's uh, foldings here. Yeah. So, it may have been. Uh, like a low angle incoming. Uh, no, 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 this, this is just true folding of younger rocks, oh. which may have been brought in later, but the shape of this is not being influenced. So the same happened with the, uh, the Manicouagan, of course, is uh, because there's an artificial lake there. Now, if you're bored and uh, you want to find an impact crater of your own, which <laughs> obviously you do, right? Let's, let's be fair. <laughs> then, activity. Yeah, then you can actually go here to these really old exposed cratons and you can find almost any really nice perfectly circular basin like this thing this thing maybe even this thing over here all of these uh are often interpreted to be associated with impact here on the edge of it sits another crater and on the edge of this one sits also another crater. so crater fiesta in uh, north canada because it's scraped by the glaciers it's a crater fiesta all right, so uh, we. So it's up to you to prove it's a crater. Yeah. We, crater. we yeah we have some career Let's left to do that. Yeah. Uh, Yent is still looking for a master's thesis project, so uh, I think uh, we we already. So these know impact craters are not rare. So in fact, if you like, if you go deep enough, the Earth was assembled by collision of you know millions of tiny uh, objects. So if you go deep enough, then. It, Almost anything is an impact crater. But could those smaller craters over our lakes, those round circle lakes over there, could they be like maybe the the residue of the bigger impacts, like things thrown away from there and then fell down there? Maybe because they're kind of like really round, so it should be from the top. So the, yeah, so almost certainly, I would say that these four, and I, I don't even know if these have a name, right? It's quite obscure. Like this is very very remote Canada. Nobody lives there. <laughs> Maybe Jan Smith is the only person that goes there. <laughs> and the Inuits. And the Inuits. But these are probably, so they could be associated with a single event, right? So also Jan Smith mentioned this. There are several reasons why you would suspect that multiple impacts occur simultaneously or roughly simultaneously, which is that a single object can, can split up. 
Right, that's one mechanism. You can have uh, an object skim off the atmosphere and then collide somewhere else, yeah. or split up, collide, whatever. Uh, you can actually have a destabilization in the solar system. So he talked briefly about the Trojans, which are these, is a group of objects that is sort of gravitationally bound. So they are sort of together. But if they get flung out of whack for some reason, you know, maybe some extra solar object sails through the solar system and flings them out into every direction, then you could have a, a temporary moment where a lot of impacts. And then you would see it almost all over the world. Or yeah, on one yeah. side of the world or something? Maybe. Yeah, it depends yeah. on when it happened, right? Yeah. Because newer newer crust will not show, or if it even lands on crust, not in the ocean. Also true. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, yeah. because I actually didn't know that, but Jan Smit mentioned very sort of convincingly that if even if you have a really big impact in the middle of the ocean... Who knows? Yeah, you're not going to yeah. So if the chicken <laughs> loop uh, was maybe uh, one hour earlier, it would have, uh, the dinosaurs would still be here. Yeah, it would be three velociraptors talking <laughs> to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How could we edit that? <laughs>Here's another one that looks strikingly similar to these ones. Yeah. So basically you can look and, and it's like the stars, you know, you can keep looking yeah. more. The, the longer you look, the more you see. And actually I've seen a paper, someone suggesting that this thing is also a giant crater. Yeah, there are many. This, this is also suggested yeah. to be a giant crater. Okay. <laughs> uh, another structure that is very, very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> The structure that Elena is going to pronounce right now. The Kamachiluika Paku Kunach Patishavakan. Exactly. Which obviously <laughs> means giant impact crater. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, there's a, a slightly more easily pronounceable name, the Lac Mistazin. Ka, ka me. So, in that, if you extrapolate that, then we have a really, really, really big, big boy. And you can only see it from those three lines over there. Actually, that should be part of the thing, right? Yeah, so, well, obviously there's plate tectonics, right? Yeah. So the plates are constantly splitting apart. They're being dissected. They're colliding. They're being subducted. So it's, it's to be expected that uh, a lot of the older impacts would be distorted or misshapen or even partially removed, right? So it's not so strange that you only would find like a, a sort of fragment of this uh, crater. Yeah, it's still insane that there are so many different structures which could all be craters. Yeah. So now we're looking at a, a different map. This is just the uh, bathymetry and here the green coast, the, the green area is what's now the coastline of, uh, of Mexico. Um, and what we can show with this map is also the gravitational uh, difference that is here. So if we switch to the gravitational map, you can see here in this area uh, a dark blue circle. Maybe you can point it out. So, yeah, so if you look, if you turn on the gravitational anomaly, you see this sort of concentric circles, right? And that is the that is the crater. Yeah, so that, that was the location that the Chicxulub impact happened. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, that is the actual crater. So it's, yeah. it's invisible on the surface, right? Because yeah. it's buried. Yeah. But it's preserved underneath. And... Uh, yeah, so what this blue color means is that there is less, yeah, gravitation at that location because a lot of, yeah, when the... Let's see, can we... So we just start with a normal surface. You never oh. lost it. Oh, with potloodjes, man. Yeah. Okay. So before the impact, we started with just a normal surface. Then the uh, now let's make it red. The crater went down. So this happened because all the material was splashed away to, well, everywhere. Yeah, as far as Spain, actually, that's yeah. where they found it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, Jan Smit found... Uh, right. Tectites in Tech Spain, tides, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this means that at this location, there's 
less mass than there was before, and therefore you detect less gravity at that location. That's yeah, yeah well, in a simple way, what this uh, map shows, right? Oh, magnetic anomalies, right? Yeah, well, okay, so originally the crater, the Chinxalup crater was discovered not in gravitational anomaly, but in magnetic anomaly, which is slightly different. So here in gravitational anomaly, you're looking at the differences in gravity, right? So as Elena explained, if you're evacuating a lot of material, you end up with a big gap and you have less gravity there, right? So uh, if, if you impact the Earth and there's a lot of melt, so all this material gets melted, then the minerals in the melt align to the magnetic field and then they solidify and then that affects the gravitational field. So if, you, sorry, the magnetic, the magnetic field. field. Yeah. So if you were to put uh, magnetic data here, then you would be able to visualize it as well. That, that's how it was originally discovered, right? And it also depends on the types of rock sediment, right? Also. Exactly, yeah. So that's, so that's I think the key here that some sediments filled it up which is weighs lighter. less, yeah. which, which is lighter, has a lower density. Yeah. But that's that's why you can still see the crater. Yeah. But that could also mean that there are a lot of more mysterious craters out there. Yeah. Which we maybe yeah. don't see anymore. What we can do is we can uh, sort of uh, do a little exploration and then we'd like to show you uh, some more of these proposed mega craters, mm -hmm. which uh, cannot be seen on the surface, but maybe. Uh, you know, super duper ancient uh, crater systems. And one of the, the really, uh, yeah, let's say clear ones is uh, basically most of Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> so if that happens, then all the Knäckebrood in the world is gone, right? This is gone, no more Knäckebrood. Knäck extinction. Knäck extinction. <laughs> It's like a uh, half part of a circle again, which you could extrapolate and then find to the other side, if we do the man. Here we go. Yeah, and now it's a really nice dark blue picture. It should be like a huge mega crater, I guess. Yeah, so potentially this, these sort of concentric negative gravity anomalies, right? So places where potentially a lot of material has been excavated could potentially be one of those mega craters, right? And in this case, we're talking about, uh, well, let's measure that. So we're talking about something that is like almost a continental scale. So let's try to extrapolate that. Whoa. So that's more than 1000 kilometers across, which is absolutely massive, right? So that's, I think that would be far bigger than the biggest yeah. crater in the solar system, probably. 